bringing a newly assembled circuit board to life can be exciting and nerve wracking, but with the proper steps, you can minimize the risk of damage during the initial power up process. I'll take you through my step-by-step -step approach from measuring resistance with a multimeter to identifying problems with a thermal camera. I'm Mark Harris, one of Altium's team of industry expert consultants. Get ready to learn how to bring up your new circuit board for the first time safely. The first step in minimizing the risk of damage during power up is to measure the resistance from the power rails to the ground with multimeter. You must measure your input power connector and any regulated rails on your board. Measuring between power and ground will give you a clear picture of the resistance between the power source and the ground, indicating potential power rail faults. You should expect to measure near zero resistance between points on the same net. You should expect to read high or infinite resistance if you measure between power rails or different nets. Start by setting your multimeter to the resistance or ohms measurement mode to measure the resistance on your circuit board. Then with your multimeter set up, touch the positive lead to one of the power rails and the negative lead to ground. The reading you get will indicate the resistance between the power rail and ground. It's important to note that the resistance may not be in the millions of ohms if you use pull up or pull down resistors or voltage dividers on the power rail. Understanding the schematic you are measuring will help you know whether resistance in the kilo ohms is reasonable. Any measurement of hundreds of ohms or less is likely to be an issue. It's good practice to repeat the measurement multiple times, especially if you're getting an over limit reading to verify the reading and ensure that it's accurate. If you measure on a solder joint, it may have flux or oxide on the surface, preventing the multimeter probe from making good electrical contact. If the resistance is consistently reading high, that's a good indication that there is likely no power rail fault. However, if the resistance reading is low, it could indicate a problem and further inspection is needed. Check your schematic and PCB layout to look for locations where connections to the voltage rail and ground are close together, especially within the same component and look for solder bridging the pins. If nothing immediately jumps out at you, it's a good time to double check part numbers and their pin out. For example, I've accidentally ordered the wrong variant of a component that has multiple pinout variations in the past. Oops. After checking the resistance, the next step is to use a current limited lab power supply to bring the board up safely. A current limited power supply is essential because it allows you to safely apply power to the circuit board without allowing excessive current to burn out components instantly. When connecting the board to the power supply, it's crucial to ensure the power supply output is disabled. This is because the power supply may have substantial output capacitance, storing enough energy to fry components on your circuit board before current limiting can kick in. With the power supply securely connected to the circuit board, it's time to bring it to life by applying power. Before you do, you must set the current limit for your lab power supply. This will ensure you only give the board enough power to operate, but not enough to damage it if there is a fault. Inrush current is also essential to consider, especially if the board has large capacitors or powerful switching power supplies. In these cases, the inrush current can exceed your current limit setting and drive the lab power supply into constant current mode. To avoid this problem, set the voltage to the board's typical input voltage. 
and set the current limit to about 30% higher than a rough estimate of the current draw of the circuit, remembering to include LEDs. An unprogrammed microcontroller's outputs will typically be high and might turn on every LED on your board. A safe starting value for many boards is around 50 to 100 milliamp, though it will depend on your schematic. Keep an eye on the current limit. If the supply changes to constant current mode, look at the output voltage. If the voltage is relatively low, it could indicate that the board has a short or similar fault. On the other hand, if the voltage is close to the set point, you might have the current limit set a little bit low. By increasing the current limit, you may get the board online safely. My thermal imaging camera is my most valuable tool when it comes to troubleshooting circuit boards. A thermal camera lets you quickly identify problematic components by detecting slight variations in temperature. My camera is a reasonably cheap option that uses a Seek thermal core, which offers excellent resolution for the price. Any thermal camera will be hugely beneficial for debugging. If a single component draws most of the current on the board, it will heat up. Even if the temperature rises less than one degree, it will be visible on the camera. Spotting slight temperature rises allows you to identify the problematic component quickly. Using your lab power supply for current limiting will ensure you're not delivering enough current to damage the component. Using a thermal imaging camera is faster, more precise, and more accurate than using your finger to check for a hot component. Your finger requires a dramatic temperature rise, potentially damaging the silicon before you find the issue. With a thermal camera, you can find the exact component or section of the circuit board causing your problem in seconds. My camera has saved me hours of trying to track down issues. A thermal camera can also detect other issues once the board is safely powered up, such as poor thermal management or overheating components. Having your board power up with a reasonable current draw doesn't mean everything is working correctly. Once the lab supply operates in constant voltage mode, verifying that any regulators on your board produce the expected output is vital. Grab your multimeter and switch it to the voltage measurement mode to check the output voltages. Touch the positive lead of the multimeter to the power rail and the negative lead to ground. Ensure the voltage is what your schematic shows it should be. If it's too low, you might be exceeding the regulator's output current limit or have incorrect feedback resistor values. It's essential to check the voltage on all power rails, as well as any other voltage points in the circuit that are crucial to its operation. By ensuring that all the voltages are within the expected range and that there are no problems with the voltage regulation outputs, you can be confident that your board is working as designed. Testing a new circuit board during the initial power-up process is crucial to ensure it's operating correctly. In this video, I covered my step-by-step -step process for bringing up a board for the first time, but I'm sure you have your own suggestions and ideas. So why not share them in the comments so we can all be more successful at bringing our projects to life? If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And if you still need to do so, remember to subscribe to our channel. I have many more topics on electronics and projects coming up that you will want to watch. Thanks for watching.